no faster than I do personally myself. Um, but it's one agenda item on an agenda of many things that the principals are working on. So I do believe that this district-wide homework committee is going to be helpful, but I don't think it's going to move as fast as we would all like. I think that also what you said about from one building to another it being different, I can tell you that it's different from one teacher to another within the same building. I was, yeah, that's what I, because I've, I've taught in the district, I taught for 32 years in the district, and I was a department chair, and I worked at the high school, and I worked at the middle school, and I was art, so, you know, you're not supposed to give homework. Um, and I was part of the original team at the middle school, and it took us a year to come up with that policy, and it was basically, in working on it, here you have all of these different areas of uh, study and then you have all of these teachers who have different philosophies within that area of study and in some departments they're you know you want to give an hour of homework but I'm going to give 20 minutes of homework and there's no reconciliation of it so I think it is a larger question and for us we just bit off that one thing because you know, when you get to the beginning of a year, you say, what do you want to work on? And sometimes you come up with four or five things. It's very hard to keep those things going as the year goes. I think it's easier when you focus in on one thing and say, okay, we're going to develop this policy. And our framework became just 20% because that's what people agreed on. There were people that were counting it as 50% and people that were counting it as 5%. And I went down to the principal at the time and went, I can't do 20 percent and we're not, we don't see the kids enough so I found a way around it by calling it a take-home project and we made it a project and we said okay for this this is just as much of a project as it is for you in class and what happened is the kids put more emphasis on it and we felt that they got more from it but that was just our philosophy so it's philosophy tough. Because there's another philosophy that says that homework so obviously you're all here, you're involved here and you're helping your kids with their homework. You're providing a space for them to do their homework. You're providing them with quiet to do their homework. But there's a lot of kids that don't have that. So to, to, to give a child a project or an extensive homework or a lot of homework or, cert or high expectations in homework, when he has absolutely nobody at home to keep him on track and do that, you know, so the people who, they don't want a lot of homework, those parents. And uh, I agree with you. Say, what is there? And I will tell you, 
and I have two children, a 26 year old and an 11 year old. And, you know, I'm very involved, I was always involved in her education and his now. And I don't want a lot of money. You know, but that's my opinion as an educator because. <laughs> right, because. <laughs> that's from one from one from the other. Because I believe <laughs> that in looking at the research, the research says that no matter how much homework you give them, it's really not going to affect his grade in elementary school. And I believe that, you know, cultivating a love of reading in him is way more important. So is he laying on the couch for at least a half an hour every day reading Harry Potter? Yes. Yeah. You know, is he talking to me about what happened in school and I'm making him useful sentences? And I feel like that's more important and the fact that he's working to be a black belt and he's working to be an eagle scout. He's got two life goals. That's what he's working on. You know, I'm not overwhelming him with eight million things. Those are your two goals. If you lose interest, then you find another goal. But, and then, you know, and I want him reading. So that's me as an educator. So. I, it doesn't mean your opinion is no, any less valid, but I'm just saying there's so many opinions about it that it's hard to find a happy medium. As an educator, then, at what age do you feel they should be learning study skills at home? I think they should be learning study I think they should be learning study skills in elementary school, but I think they can do that through a little bit of homework. So, okay, you need to read for a minimum of 15 minutes every day, and you need to be held accountable for that in some way. You need to be doing your, I think they should be doing a spiral review in mathematics every day, not what they learned that day, because they don't know it, and then they're going to come home and say, I don't know how to do this, and you're going to say, well, I don't know how to do it either, because I don't know how to do that now. But if they were doing a spiral review where they were practicing skills that they were confident in, then they're, you know, we're keep we're spiraling it, and then I think that they should be doing sometimes a little bit of writing, but I don't think that little ones should really be doing more than 10 minutes a day for their age. That's what the research says. Research says 10 minutes a day for their grade level. You know? So in first grade, three minutes for a third grader. That's what you mean? Plus, plus the reading. Plus the reading. Mm -hmm. Because reading, we shouldn't. I can tell you, it takes my daughter a lot less than 30 minutes to do her homework. And I feel like the rigor is not there for her. So as we, uh, when I go back to when this homework committee is formed, I will definitely bring that to them that there are people out there that think the rigor is not. There and what I do after these meetings too, to the best of my memory, and now I have this, so um, <laughs> I do put notes together, and then based on your email, I send them back to you and say, "This is what we talked about." So I will make sure that that gets well. Yeah. 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 Well, and I, 
I think that's why you have to almost look at it in broad strokes. And when we did the homework policy at the middle school, looking back on it, like you said, 20%, that's what we could agree on. But how educationally valid is that um, to do that? And then there was, you know, the late. What, what happens when the kid turns it in late? That became the second part of the policy. And I looked at it like it was, I didn't buy into it, so I looked for my way around it. Um, I think that I had two students go through, and uh, my daughter had to really work very hard to understand everything, and she did really well. She was a really hard worker, and she excelled. My son, he knew it like that. And what you see as kids develop, as they go through, they have to kind of find their way. So I think it's important that they have the study skills, and I think parts of that come through naturally, hopefully, in the everyday classroom. And I know when I had my seniors, in high school, you know, I would talk to them about, okay, you're going to need to learn this and learn this and be able to figure out what your way is to study because when you get to college, you're on your own, baby. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you have to, and I would say to my son, like, you know, you can't just pull stuff out like that. You're going to have to put the work in. So it's really kind of an overall, how do we educate them all the way through? And probably what we need more of is homework help kind of stuff so that we have where parents are having a hard time where we can point them in a direction of this or that. There are there have been homework clubs. I know the middle school list that you wrote, read is very sparse because there's a lot of clubs that pop up and I knew that they were doing homework help and with I was, kids. And I talked to you about some of the things we would like to you know, include in the budget that the homework uh, a club for a parent center that is There was a school district, I think, it, I forget, it was in New York, it might have been in Westchester, where they, you can do three separate, you can target the students, and you can target them by, you know, great, because every kid, even kindergartners have emails, not that you would take kindergartners, but um, you could do kids, you can do parents, and you can do staff. Did your daughter move schools or did she move? Um, she moved schools, yeah. Um, 
which she went from the middle school to the, the high school. school. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, you know the our experience so far has been that the teachers have been available, you know, after school and and will help and assist even if it's just helping keep them.